There's a lot of misinformation about what Huawei is actually up to right now. They're making Android phones, but with no Google services. They have their own app store, but some things are missing from it. Huawei has their own operating system they've developed from scratch called Harmony OS. This is huge news, but no one seems to really have any answers about what's happening with it. So I've spent the last month working with them, just trying to really understand what the master plan is. So in case you didn't know, in May of last year, the US put Huawei on something called the Entity List, a list of bodies that US companies like Google aren't allowed to work with. But wait a second, if you're a maker of Android smartphones and Google can't do business with you, how does that even work? Well, in a normal situation, Google certifies Android devices, and in doing so, they give them access to something called GMS, Google Mobile Services. That means access to Google's core apps, things like Gmail, Google Maps, Google Calendar, etc. But it also means that third-party developers can build their own apps to take advantage of Google services. So for example, when you open up Uber, you see a map. But Uber didn't build their own map system from scratch. That's a massive undertaking. It's actually just data pulled from Google Maps using Google services. But you're probably seeing where this is going. Because Google can't work with Huawei right now, you don't get this GMS on a Huawei phone, but instead something called HMS. Huawei mobile services. And for the last year, the thing people are focusing on, I'd say understandably, is what's missing, what you don't get versus Google mobile services. But today I just want to zoom out and show you what Huawei is actually trying to do with all of this, the bigger picture, which starts with HMS Android and ends with Harmony OS, which I think is fascinating. So right now when you pick a smartphone, you're probably used to picking between two ecosystems, Apple iOS and GMS Android. But what Huawei is really trying to make here is a third player in that field. HMS Android. And I mean, that extra competition is good news for everybody, not just people who buy Huawei phones. But to understand what it actually means for Huawei, take a look at Apple. Apple makes smartphones that, if you look at their hardware, like the amount of RAM they have, or the size of their batteries, or the specs of their camera systems, on paper, they are crushed versus top-end Android phones. But because Apple builds the chips inside their phones, the hardware, and every aspect of the software that runs on top of it, they can design every line of code in that software to take advantage of every last bit of power in that hardware. Apple phones are hyper-efficient. Most Android phones don't have this efficiency. The companies who make Android phones, they buy chipsets from an external company. And then on top of that, they're relying on a software core built by Google, which is another external company. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. The proposition that Huawei's making is quite similar to Apple's. They already build their own chipsets for their phones, but what's happening now is that because of this US ban, they're relying on their own software core too. This has its downsides, but the upside is that because of this top-down control they've got, there's the potential for that same sort of synergy. As an example, well, according to Huawei at least, HMS Android has 62% lower latency than GMS Android, so faster communication between the different layers of the operating system. And the cherry on top is that if Huawei can pull this off en masse, then when apps do come to Huawei phones, they'll be more power efficient, because they'll be based on a core which Huawei has designed for Huawei phones, and the apps might also just be better. You might have noticed something if you're an Android user. Your phone takes amazing photos when you use the normal camera app, but kind of terrible photos when you take them through a third party app. Like if I went onto the Instagram camera right now, the photo I'd be able to take would be nothing close to what my camera is actually capable of. You might have noticed that while your phone comes with an ultra wide camera or incredible zoom capabilities, try accessing these features while taking a Snapchat story and you can't. The problem that normal Android faces is fragmentation. Let's say Instagram was to take a random smartphone, let's just call it Phone X, and then start tweaking their app to take advantage of, let's say, its two times zoom camera and its 120 degree ultra wide camera. That's technically possible, but then they'd have tens of thousands of other phones to then start accounting for, each with their own varying software skins. The Android ecosystem is almost too vast, and there isn't a system in place to be able to just kind of code for these features once and then apply them to all phones. But Huawei's HMS has this system. So what Huawei's trying to do right now is to basically hand developers the tools to take advantage of Huawei's specific features. So if you take Instagram as an example, what Huawei's hoping for is that you'll be able to use the main camera, yes, you can do that on every phone, but also the ultra-wide, Huawei's night mode software to take photos in the dark, or even the 3D depth sensor on the front of some phones to better track those AR face filters, just do it more accurately. It's yet to be seen if developers do implement these features, but the 
point is with HMS, they can. As an example, I've got an app here called UCAM. It's a third party app built by someone outside of Huawei. But then if I go into low light, for example, and then take a photo through it, it'll still use the AI chip inside the phone to brighten the photos. This doesn't happen on normal Android phones, even if they had dedicated AI chips. But okay, none of this matters if you don't have apps. And you probably know Huawei phones have no access to Google Play Store. But what you get instead is something called Huawei App Gallery. I've been told a load of impressive figures that there's over 1.4 million developers registered right now, and something like 55,000 apps that have those HMS core features built in. But like, Huawei is fully aware that if you go onto the App Gallery right now, there are some apps that you might have been able to find on Google's Play Store that you won't find here. But from the conversations I've had with Huawei, it's pretty clear that they know. They know that people want this stuff, they're trying as hard as they can to get it, but it takes time because there's no precedent for a situation like this. But they're also pretty aware that the solution to that is to create an environment where developers can't say no. So imagine an independent developer is approached by Huawei, who says that all you need to do is to put your app on our App Store and that's it. You'll reach millions more users, we'll help you do it, and you'll get better exposure on our store because you've got less competition. You can see why that's enticing for developers. And while we as consumers wait for that process to happen, there are some mechanisms in place to make it easier. There's Phone Clone, which transfers apps from your old phone. But there's something I think is quite important that I haven't seen a single person talk about. It's called More Apps. This is basically the first thing I would tell anyone who's going to buy a Huawei phone to download. Because you'll probably notice the first thing you see is every app you've had questions about. And for each one, it will give you either a direct download link or a link straight to the web version of that app. And everything you find through here will work on Huawei phones. What I thought was more interesting was the wish list. When you're in the app gallery, you'll see this little option to request an app. And the whole purpose of this is to tell Huawei what apps are the highest priority. To send Huawei the signal to then chase those developers. And when those apps eventually become available, you can make it auto installed on your phone. If it was me doing this, I'd probably also start building like exclusive applications for the app gallery. I think Huawei's already started doing this in China. But anyways, that's Huawei's core system. But what sits on top of it is MUI. I'll talk about this probably in a different video, but the important takeaway is that the latest MUI 10 has an almost hidden newfound emphasis on inter-device connectivity. They're really trying to mesh together the smartphone and the laptop experience, as an example. But when you try to do this with operating system as vastly different as Android and Windows, you run into some limitations. But that's where Harmony OS comes in. So in case you didn't know, Harmony OS is Huawei's own complete operating system. They've built it from scratch and it works on smartphones. So when the US ban first came out, this kind of led a lot of us to believe that Huawei was gonna start releasing phones powered by Harmony OS. But I can tell you now, this actually isn't the plan for Harmony. At least for the foreseeable future, Huawei wants to stick with Android for its phones for a few reasons. First of all, that Huawei still wants to work with Google and Google wants to work with Huawei. It's just that the current situation doesn't allow them to do that. If however, Huawei jumped ship to a completely new operating system, they'd kind of be shutting that door behind them. And secondly, if I didn't make this clear, Huawei's pumping a lot of resources into getting developers to port their apps over from the Google Play Store. And right now that's a pretty easy ask, but trying to get developers to redevelop their apps for a new operating system, that's a different ballgame. That said, while Harmony OS isn't quite what people thought it was, it's a fascinating part of Huawei's master plan. The way it was described to me is as a distributed operating system. Harmony is based on something called a microkernel, which basically means the code is not specific to one type of device. So yes, it can run on phones, but it can also run on anything from earphones to fridges to cars. But why? Well, imagine all the electronic devices you have right now. Maybe you've got a laptop, a smartphone, a TV, maybe a speaker system. Each of these devices, they've got certain inputs and certain outputs. Like your laptop has a keyboard, that's an input. Your TV has a screen, that's an output. So you've got all these devices with their separate inputs and outputs. But the idea here is that if they're all powered by the same Harmony operating system, then those inputs and outputs can be pooled. So for example, I could press a button on my laptop to start playing music, an input, and that can immediately create an output on a different device. Let's say, start playing that music on my wireless speaker and then showing me lyrics on my TV screen. It would behave as if all your devices were one connected device. Or in a more real world example, let's say someone was video calling me on my phone. 
I could use the phone's front camera as the input so that the other person can see my face, but then the ecosystem might decide that actually the TV is the best output for me to see the other person. So it can display them on there. And this is a real thing. Harmony OS isn't just some sort of theoretical pipe dream. They've already launched a TV that runs it. So that's the long-term goal, this kind of evolving ecosystem of connected devices. I'm hoping I've kind of cleared up some of the misinformation. I think some of the stuff I'm talking about here is the first time this has been talked about. So let me know if it was useful and I'll catch you in the next one.